On a quiet weekday morning in Embu County, Mercy sits at home. There isn't much to do for the school dropout. Mercy is deaf and mute. She's also pregnant with her rapist's child. A neighbor has been taking advantage of the 16-year-old. We call him grandfather because he's an older man. He comes into the house when my mother isn't here. When he would rape me, I wouldn't think of screaming. Neighbors say they noticed the elderly man befriended Mercy, and they thought it was because he pitied her, but were shocked to find out he was sexually assaulting the teenager. I went into the hospital to be tested. I was told that the police would arrest the man. They did, but then they released him, and no one gave any information on why. Because she dropped out of school, Mercy doesn't know much sign language. Even with the help of interpreters, she's unable to communicate exactly what happened. A friend of hers who wishes to remain anonymous shares her account of the story. There's a man here, an architect. He works here. He's a friend of the family. That's when he took the advantage of the girl. He gave the grandma some cash to go and take some drinks. Then he was left here. What was going on, she can only tell. But we didn't know what was happening until the girl, the girl became pregnant. Mercy's friend doesn't know sign language, but the two communicate using what they call local signs. She doesn't know how long this man has been sexually assaulting Mercy. All she knows is that Mercy hates him. Other witnesses unwilling to appear on camera tell us that the rapist bribed Mercy's mother not to appear in court, which is why he was released by police. For Mercy, this means continuing to see her rapist on a daily basis. In fact, the man they call Grandpa is an architect who is building a house right next to Mercy's family home. Advocates for people who are deaf say that unfortunately Mercy's case is not an uncommon one. This year alone, the Deaf Empowerment Soviet of Kenya, which operates here in Embu County, has been approached by seven women who have all been victims of gender-based violence. All of them struggle in reporting their situation to the police. There are so many women and girls who are violated out there in the societies quiet about it. Some victims fear to report to police. In the village, they don't like to speak out. Sometimes the police station is very far or victims feel it's not important to report, so they just tell their friends who support them. Some victims who are children are scared because they don't know how to report it since they don't know sign language or how to write, so reporting is sometimes impossible. And sometimes when deaf victims report it to the police, the police don't respond. It's a very big challenge. Despite setbacks, some deaf victims manage to file police reports. Nessie lives just a few hundred meters from Mercy. She's also deaf and is the victim of gender-based violence. The mother of three was abused by her husband while pregnant with her last child and said she feared for her life. One day I came to ask my husband for sugar and he fought me. He beat me behind my shoulder and I had marks there. I was pregnant and in pain. I left to go to my friend's house and was afraid to come home. Nessie's friend took her to a police station to file a report. Initially, officers completed the report in Kiswahili, which is a problem as Nessie only reads English. There's no sign language interpreter at the police station, so someone like me can't go alone without fear. Someone must come with me. The problem is that police write in Kiswahili. It is impossible for police to communicate with someone deaf like me. I have some friends, but communicating is hard. I don't have enough support if something else were to happen to me again. Enrica, a sign language interpreter, says deaf women are more vulnerable. Unlike other victims of violence, they're unable to scream in self-defense, which means people are likelier to take advantage of them. There's a lot of challenges. These deaf people get home there. Even their own home, they are being oppressed a lot. Even they are being raped by their own, even the uncles, even the aunties, even the brothers. They rape them because they know there is no voice for their people. Find out about your work group then. Or see if you can Embu County police say that deaf people rarely report crimes, likely because they're discouraged. In most cases, um, uh, the relatives or uh, people who are taking care of uh, either the deaf or the blind people, 
they, they discourage them from coming to the police station. And that is why maybe they don't want to carry the burden of uh, at least escorting them to police station or um, uh, coming to report or they don't want to be witnesses. But those people, whenever they come to the police station, we normally treat them like any other person. Once we have identified and confirmed that uh, maybe he's blind or is deaf and he cannot uh, give us a proper information, uh, the first thing is first to look for either relatives and also an interpreter who can assist the police at least to cut the information from the complainer. For someone like Mercy, that isn't enough. She's unable to communicate with interpreters. And according to neighbors, her family has been bribed, so it's in their best interest to keep quiet on the matter. While being silent is a choice for them, Mercy doesn't have that option. Her silent screams may never be heard. For NTV, I'm Jackie Habib.